Muslims believe in the same prophets mentioned in the Jewish and Christian traditions, including Prophet Noah, Moses, Abraham, and Prophet Jesus. They were sent with the same general message, to worship God alone, without partners, sons, or daughters, and to follow God's commandments. Before Prophet Muhammad, prophets were only sent for particular people in particular places and periods. However, Prophet Muhammad is the last and final prophet who was meant for all of mankind till the end of time. Prophet Jesus was sent after Prophet Moses to reform Judaism, to reinstate the rule of the divine, and to seep away all innovations introduced after Prophet Moses has passed. But Prophet Jesus was rejected by the majority of his people who tried to crucify him. The Israelites and the Roman authorities were not able to harm Prophet Jesus as God raised him to the heavens. He departed saying, But verily, truly I tell you, it is for good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. John 16, 7 Prophet Jesus was referring to the Prophet that was coming after him, Prophet Muhammad. Such like how Prophet Jesus came to reform the previous message sent before him by the previous Prophet Musa. Prophet Muhammad came to reform Prophet Jesus' message since it was as well distorted by his followers and did not survive in its original form. Prophet Jesus stated, I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak of His own, but He will speak whatever He hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. John 16:13. Prophet Jesus hinted that God will reveal another book and messenger. The man that Jesus prophesied was Prophet Muhammad, who was the who was the paraclete, the comforter, the helper, the admonisher sent by God after Prophet Jesus. Additionally, Prophet Jesus spoke of Prophet Muhammad in John 16:14 stating, "He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you." This prophecy applies to Prophet Muhammad, to whom was the Holy Qur'an revealed to, from God to guide human people unto the truth. O oh, our people, respond to the Messenger of Allah, and believe in Him. Allah will forgive for you your sins, and protect you from a painful punishment. Additionally, God speaks to Moses, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command them. Deuteronomy 18.18 The Christians mistakenly believe this prophecy refers to Prophet Jesus because Prophet Jesus was like Prophet Moses. In a way, they were both Jews and both were prophets. However, if you're looking only at these two criteria, then all prophets of the Bible who came after Prophet Moses, such as Prophet Isaiah, Daniel, Joel, etc., who fulfilled this prophecy, since all of them were Jews as well as prophets. It is indeed Prophet Muhammad, who was like Prophet Moses as the verse stated. Both Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses had a father and a mother, whereas Prophet Jesus had no father. Both prophets were also married and had children, whereas Prophet Jesus did not marry nor had any kids according to the Bible. Both Prophet Muhammad and Moses died natural deaths, whereas Prophet Jesus was raised into the heavens by God. Additionally, Prophet Muhammad is from among the brethren of Prophet Moses because Arabs are brethren of Jews. Prophet Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. The Arabs are the descendants of Prophet Ishmael, and the Jews are the descendants of Prophet Isaac. Additionally, Prophet Muhammad was unlettered, who didn't know how to read, write, and calculate. So his revelation would come straight from God, verbatim, as the verse stated. Prophet Muhammad was born about 570 years after the birth of Jesus. He was born in Mecca, in the Arabian Peninsula. The people of Mecca were devoted idol worshippers, and the area and period at the time was full of ignorance, foolishness, and misguidance. At the age of 40, Prophet Muhammad received his first revelation in a cave from God via the angel Gabriel. He then spent the remaining portion of his life 
explaining and living the teachings of Islam and the Quran, the religion that God revealed to him. Although he was known among his community as the truthful, the trustworthy, the majority of his people did not believe him or his message. Soon after, a massive campaign started to prosecute those who believed in the message. After 13 years of preaching in the city of Mecca, Prophet Muhammad migrated to the city of Medina, where he had some followers. The followers made him the leader of the city. The disbelievers of Mecca plotted and attempted to attack the faith sent from God. However, what was originally a small group of Muslims grew in number, and they were able to withstand the attack of the disbelievers. Within 10 years, the Prophet himself led an army back to Mecca and conquered it in a bloodless victory. Thus, Islam became victorious in Arabia and began spreading throughout the world. Later, Prophet Muhammad died in 632. God states in the Quran that he did not send Prophet Muhammad except as a mercy for mankind. And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the world. The Prophet was sent to guide humanity. Prophet Muhammad understood the Qur'an, he loved the Qur'an, and he lived his life based on the principles of the Qur'an and its standards. He is the world's best role model for all of mankind. He is the one with outstanding virtues and characteristics. He was an astonishing husband, father, grandfather, leader, teacher, judge, and statesman. He preached justice, fairness, peace, and love. Muslims attempt to emulate the Prophet Muhammad's faith, behavior, attitude, patience, charity, compassion, righteousness, and piety. The act of emulating the Prophet is called Sunnah. The term Sunnah is a concept that means the way or the practice of. The meaning of Sunnah is generally understood as the act of doing whatever the Prophet said, did, or approved. Sunnah is the way or the practice of Prophet Muhammad. Muslims emulate the way the Prophet ate, drank, the position he slept on, the way he behaved and interacted with others. Following the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet, would make one's life in this world and the next easier. Islam is such a natural way of life that its rules, regulations and recommendations becomes easy to adopt. Islam is not merely a religion. It is a way of life, a holistic way designed by the Almighty to benefit the one that follows it. The comprehensiveness of Islam allows every intention, word, or action in life to become an act of worship, where one gains reward from the Almighty, from praying to God, giving charity, helping others, eating, drinking, or even sleeping. There has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent pattern for everyone whose hope is in Allah in the last day and who remembers Allah often. Prophet Muhammad is certainly one of the most influential figures in history whose life, actions, and thoughts changed the world. When Muslims declare their faith in God, they also declare the belief in the last and final messenger, Muhammad. Muslims believe in Prophet Muhammad. They love him, they respect him, they obey him, and they follow him to their best of ability. They hold him in such high regard that for many, it is emotionally painful to see or hear their beloved prophet, their beloved teacher, ridiculed, disrespected, demeaned, scorned, or mocked. Whereas Muslims look up to Prophet Muhammad, they certainly do not worship him or attribute any divine characteristics with him. Certain people mistakenly assume that Muslims worship Muhammad by formulating an incorrect analogy since Christians worship Jesus so they assume Muslims worship Prophet Muhammad. Hence, incorrectly naming the followers of Islam to Muhammadians. Prophet Muhammad, like Prophet Jesus, never claimed divine status. Muslims understand that Prophet Muhammad is only a man and was sent from God. However, he is a man worthy of our utmost respect and love. The man who will stand before God on the day of judgment and beg God to have mercy on us the one that will intercede for us on the day of judgment. Muslims love and respect him because he is the slave and messenger of God who was chosen to be the last and final prophet whom the Almighty sent to humanity, whose mission will continue until the last day. A mercy to humankind whose gentleness and devotion to humanity is unprecedented.
He is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.